course. And I was like, hey, if you ever do me the honor of getting angry with me, that means we have a deeper relationship. That means you trust me. It means that something real is going on here. We need to normalize criticizing our pastors. To criticize means to point out something that's wrong, right? To elevate is to isolate. A lot of people elevate their pastors on a pedestal on a level far above them. They see their pastor as someone who is more holy, more godly. And like, I hope that's true, but you should not elevate godly people. In fact, Jesus showed the opposite example. He said, the greatest among you must be the servant of all, meaning if you truly are spiritually mature, wise, you should put yourself below others. That's what he did. Here's another thing Jesus did, guys. Someone came up and said, good teacher, and he said, hey, why do you call me good? There is only one who is good, your Father in heaven. So, time and time again, Jesus shows us that we are not to elevate spiritual teachers, godly people. We don't elevate them, guys. When you elevate someone, you isolate them. A pastor that is isolated is alone. A pastor that is isolated and alone is insulated from critique, which means nobody's telling him what he's doing poorly or well. Here's the other side of that whole paradigm. If you start criticizing your pastor, Guess what you're doing? You're opening the door for him to criticize you. Let me tell you guys, pastors are afraid to bring real true critique and correction to congregates. They're afraid they will lose congregates. They're afraid, they're afraid they will lose their congregation, which is also their salary. There's a real toxic relationship between congregates and pastors when congregates elevate and isolate their pastors because they will not speak freely. And that's what I'm talking about, guys. But, you know, you should criticize your pastor. Yes, I'm saying you should be open and honest. You should not be afraid to say anything true. If our church communities, if our Christian community, communities can't be places, guys, where we can speak the truth in love, whoo, they're going to be toxic. And guess what? They are toxic. Why? Because you don't criticize your pastor. You can't tell your pastor when you're thinking something that you think he may not like, he or she may not like. You need to be able to say things you think your pastor will not like. And guess what? That's how you grow too. It's a great thing for you to criticize your pastor. It's good for them. It's good for you. If you're not having conversations that can be critical, guess what's not happening? Confession. Confession, guys. Confession is one of the greatest deficits in the church today. Confession. Hey, I'm struggling with anger. I'm struggling with porn. I'm struggling with lust. I'm struggling with money. I'm struggling with greed. I'm struggling with anger. I'm struggling. Needs to be a word that we normalize in the church. I'm struggling with that sermon you're preaching, Pastor. I'm struggling with the way you're leading this church, Pastor. I'm struggling with the way you view homosexuality, Pastor. I'm struggling with the way that you don't teach us this and don't teach us that. And I'm struggling with the way that church seems to be a Sunday show, but nobody's showing me how to do the things you're talking about. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. And I feel like you're not doing some things you should be doing, or you're doing some things you shouldn't be doing. Guys, Stories of church hurt are multiplying faster than bunny rabbits. <laughs> Woo! Faster than babies can poop. <laughs> Woo! We need to normalize <laughs> we need to normalize criticizing our pastors so they're not isolated and alone and without accountability. Your pastor being accountable to some mysterious secretive group outside your church that nobody knows and nobody can talk to. What? Is, is the freaking Illuminati keeping your, pa your pastor in check? I don't know who. But guys, some elder board outside your church or some hierarchy of church leadership outside your church critiquing your pastor. But nobody in your church who actually knows what's going on, who sees what's going on day to day. That's not good. That's not healthy. 
Your pastor can have a, a support group outside of the church, but real accountability comes from inside the church. And guess what? It, you damn well better believe it's not going to come from people he's hired and he's paying and he can fire, or the board he's selected that, you know, his pet, whatever, his favorite people in the church that he elects to everything, these people are not going to keep him accountable because there's a favoritism going on there. He's favoring them and they're supposed to favor him and that's how it works. Look at who the elders are in most churches, guys. The top donors. If you've got an elder board of people that donate the most to church, but that's favoritism, that's simony, that's all those things. That's not healthy. That doesn't create real accountability. The average congregate needs to start criticizing their pastor. And pastors, you need to start criticizing your congregates. Wow. There's a thought. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Ephesians for 15. Speaking the truth in love. In love. In love, love, love. 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 True story. I once told a pastor I would be honored if he ever got angry with me. Because he was super passive, super nice super even all the time like never riled and i was like hey if you ever do me the honor of getting angry with me that means we have a deeper relationship that means you trust me it means that something real is going on here never happened though but guys we need to be real with each other church so often and so easily becomes a surface Sunday morning show where everybody's trying to look their best and do their best and be their best and yuck, hey, fake it till you make it, right? No, guys, we're supposed to be genuine. It's be a mess till you get healed. There's a better phrase. Instead of fake it till you make it, be completely raw and open about the mess you're in so you can find healing because James says, confess your sins to one another and so be healed. Be naked about your problems, your struggles. And if your church kicks you out because of it, then it wasn't the church. And you didn't lose a damn thing because what you were in was not a church. That's why we need to normalize criticizing your pastors. And that's why you need to criticize your pastor. And your pastor needs to start criticizing you. Real deep Relationships can handle it. Fake relationships cannot. Test this out, guys. See if you have real relationships at church. Or are they all fake? Walk up to your pastor next Sunday and say, You know, good message, good scriptures, but I think you got some things wrong. Write them an email, write them a note, text them, whatever. Say, let's get together for coffee. Start to be real and, and see what happens. Your pastor may not like it, but he needs it and you need it too. Right? It's, it's criticism in the spirit of love. And that's the thing, guys. If you won't criticize your pastor, you don't love them. If you won't criticize your brothers and sisters for their good in love, then you really don't love them. Yes. I'll tell you one thing. The church is way too critical of people outside of it not near critical enough of people inside. Love your neighbor. Criticize your brother and sister. <laughs> Woo! There you go. Oh, yeah. And by the way, your pastor is your brother or sister. And that's part of the problem, guys. You're not treating your pastor like they're a member of the church, a member of the body. And they're not treating themselves like they're a member of the body. Your pastor is not the supreme leader of your church. The sacrosanct, untouchable, holy one. He's not the head of the church, guys. Jesus is the head of the church. Your pastor is just a member with a different function and role than you.
doesn't mean they're better. It certainly doesn't mean they're right about everything. It certainly doesn't mean they're more mature in every way. <laughs> Start seeing your pastor and church leaders as brothers and sisters first and foremost. Because the church ain't going to get healthy if we don't. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently, but watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6.2